That's ridiculous. If you go down to the shops these days, you could be in for a surprise. He's just searching him because he's told him he's got a knife on him. If you go down to the shops these days, you'd better go in disguise. Who's got any ID on him? If you go down to the shops these days, you'd better not go alone. It's lovely down at the shops these days, but safer to stay at home. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it. I would have said his behaviour wasn't even human. Twenty miles east of Hull, in the normally quiet seaside town of Withensea, trouble is brewing in the high street. CCTV cameras are trained on the chemist shop where a man inside is picking up a prescription. Unaware that cops are watching and waiting for him outside. He's wanted because they suspect that when he last went shopping, he held up a supermarket armed with a handgun. What's he wearing, please? And yeah, he's wearing a brown bobble hat, grey jump pant, black trousers. He's just crossing Seaside Road now. What's he got? Brown bobble hat? Yeah. CCTV will monitor him, and there was a local officer talking to us, so we knew exactly where he was going to be. But there's a problem. Time is running out. About another 15 seconds, and he'll be out of CCTV coverage. We were down to, sort of like, seconds before we were going to lose contact with him via the CCTV, which we had. PC Brook and PC Cole aren't ordinary traffic cops, they're armed cops. But before they can proceed with firearms, they need official permission or authority from their boss. Because the gun was used in the armed robbery, obviously we, we were deployed to, to go and deal with him. They're hoping they can use a new, less than lethal weapon today. You are authorised by uh, Chief Superintendent Cheeseman for a preemptive taser, Ellen. A taser gun which fires a 50,000 volt charge at suspects, rendering them defenseless instantly. We had authority for a preemptive taser. It means that uh, the suspect doesn't have to make any threats to anyone. It's considered so dangerous that the best way to deal with them is to obviously use a taser and then arrest him with a minimum of force and fuss. Just up there. Yeah. Now there's another complication. The suspect has met up with a friend who could accidentally be caught in the firing line. The cops have seen their chance, though. While the friend is making a phone call, the suspected armed robber is in for a shocking surprise. <laughs> It fires out two barbs, which are connected by wires to the, the taser device. It tends to uh, lock you up and you'll just drop to the floor, at which point it's 50,000 volts is going through him. Stay there. Put your hands on there. Where if he's not compliant, then we've got the capability to just be able to, uh, to pull the trigger and he gets tasered again until he realises that he's got to comply. This is the first time the taser has ever been used in Humberside, and it's worked. The suspect's coming quietly. He's been fine, he's been fully compliant. You've got to bear in mind he's just had, you know, the shock of his life. No weapons have been found on the man, and he's protesting his innocence, as is his mate, still in the phone box. I don't know anything about an armed robbery. Or no. anything, what's he? What's he said to you this morning? He just, I just met him. I just literally met him just, at just five metres down the road, and I watched right. the phone box ring my mum yeah. to see if she was in, and then you got turned up, so right. I didn't say anything. Okay. So I don't know where he's been this morning. Right? All right, mate. Okay. Right, but I can prove where I've been all this morning because I've been. With my yeah, that's, we're not worried about that. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah don't worry. So I'm not in any way connected to an armed robbery, am I? No. You just not that we're aware of at this stage. Good. This morning you just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong yeah. time. Yeah. The man is an innocent bystander. He can now get back to his mobile phone call. Hello, I'm 
being well, deadly serious. Come outside and have a look, there's loads of coppers everywhere. The suspected armed robber is unhurt, but he's not at all happy about being tasered. It's a complete balls up this I thought you weren't even supposed to fire them unless I made an attempt to do something. I didn't know then. That's good there. It was authorised at the end of the day, I have done nothing. Not since I got out of jail two years ago. I haven't done right. anything. Well, I, can, well, I can't discuss why you've been arrested now. You'll let this go, don't you? The cops are carrying conventional guns as well. Without the taser, the stakes could have been a whole lot higher. They're, they're the barbs that are actually fired into the suspect or the suspect's clothing. Obviously, the, the, uh, the pointy bit with the hooked end to stop it coming back, straight back out. And the wires are what's attached to the actual taser from which the current is discharged down the wires into the barbs. One hit him in the chest there, and the second one was somewhere on the left forearm. Not all bobbies are born into the job. 11 years ago, Ben Townhill managed supermarkets in Hull before signing up for the police after getting fed up with some of his customers. Some of the shops I worked at were in the less affluent areas of the city. We had our fair share of shoplifters and me being the type of person I am made a point of challenging them. I just kind of found it the natural progression really. A different kind of customer, one who ignores the highway code, is the challenge for PC Townhill these days. There's trouble in store. That's ridiculous. Fucking the view, Yeah, it is. Just get him to shift. Yeah. Uh... Just pull there for his mat, please. Townhill has a way of dealing with people who break the rules of the road, even if it is just stopping on a zigzag line. Giving them a ticket. People that that park on zigzags, that use a telephone, don't wear the seat belts. Um, it's all the same to me. I'll deal with it in a positive manner. Now then, I've stopped you because you were parked within the limits of a Pelican Crossing. I know you just come out from the shop. You was way to the guys work. Uh, my boss work at the shop. He's going for six in the shop. Have you got your licence with you? No, I'm just working, I'm um, not really now. And then? I've got through with the licence, but to know with the have, no... have you got a driving licence? Yeah, yeah. British driving licence, uh, is it? Italian. Italian, right, OK. Whose van is it? It's my boss. It's your boss's. Are you insured to drive it? Yeah. Right. Well, because you've you told me you've got an Italian licence, obviously I can't give you a ticket for that, which is what I was going to do, OK? The offence itself carries three points and a £60 fine. So what I'll have to do is summons you to court. You'll have to go to the whole magistrate's court. OK? At, at the end of the day... There isn't, I'm afraid, no, cos it's da it, Listen, it's dangerous, OK? Have you got any identification on you at all? No, not at all. Nothing at all? So how, how am I going to prove who you are, then? I can give him my name, it's not problem for about that, I can give him my name. Jim had done some checks on the van. It's a white Ford transit van. He PNC the registration and got the keeper details. Pasquale what? The registered keeper was the only person that was insured for the van. He'd given his name as Paco or something and he said he was the keeper's brother. Right, what's your boss's name? Uh, Steve. Steve what? Couple. See the couple. I suppose it's similar, but it's Pasquale. Mm. Yeah, there. Who's that? That's just my brother. That's your brother? Yeah. Right. You haven't got insurance to drive this, have you? I, I'm, I'm um, using my image. You've got no insurance to drive it? So in addition to stopping on a zebra crossing, I'm reporting for no insurance as well. Driving with no insurance. His body language was all wrong. Just have a seat in the back of the car for me, please, sir. Townhill is going to have to pay a visit to the man's house to find the details he needs to verify his identity. Okay, thank you very much. He's, uh, he's not interested on the driving license. Yeah, he, say, he, says he, he said he's got an Italian license. Right, it's definitely well, only insured to Pasquale Cuerno. Right, we'll, uh, cheers, mate. We'll, uh, we'll run him back to Hesel then and um, verify who he is then. He gave me an address in Hesel, um, which was a little bit further up the road, um, but he couldn't give me an exact address. Where, where is your house? I live with my brother, man. In Hesel? No, no, in down here. Right. You've got one more chance. I'm going to lock you up. Tell me who you are and where you live. Two minutes ago, you told me you lived in Hesel. Well, I, I, I don't know the area, but... Hello. Uh, 
školy, malá katechy, jo, jiným problém. Já mám, my mám yeah. The Brother. Right. Where do you live? Yeah. Well, I, I can live in Aisol as well. The... We checked on the details that he'd given us and there was no record of who he said he was. I'm not, I'm not lying. My name is Paco. Right, and where do you live? Well, I, I live in the house of my brother. I live as well in Gippesville uh, as well. So you've got two houses, have you? No, it's not man. I was in, uh, in the Mebro, there's no man. Paco is still telling a Paco lies. You've got to be firm with the, with these people, because given a chance, they'll try and pull the wool over your eyes, like he was, he was clearly trying to do that. And if you're telling me that you're not Pasquale, OK, and you're his brother, you're not insured to drive that van? No, I'm Pasquale. You're Pasquale? Right, so why are you lying to us then? Because there's no one to court. Uh, court uh, I don't like this bloody court. Uh. The truth is out. Paco is Pasquale. But something still doesn't quite add up. And by you telling me that you're not Pasquale, no. I've reported you for an offence which you haven't even committed because you are the man that's insured to drive the van, aren't you? No. So. I think you've been a little. Because you've got no enough money to pay van as well. Right, OK. Watch your legs. If he'd have been honest with us to start with, yeah. we'd have um, dealt with him and he'd been on his way. But he just kept kept digging himself deeper and deeper into this hole. Just a couple of miles away, at a retail park on the waterfront, there's more trouble in store. At a B and Q. A gang has been rumbled trying to pull off a clever plot to steal some expensive power tools. Two of them have fled in the direction of a nearby McDonald's. Traffic cops Alex Weeks and Lee Robinson have been called in to catch them. As we were making our way down, more and more information was filtering through. There were two lads as we arrived in puffer jackets. The retail park has got reasonable security and CCTV of their own and they'd monitored the two lads going across the retail park away from B&Q towards the McDonald's restaurant. As we came in, they were walking across here. There was just something with the baseball caps and their demeanour and the way they were sort of edging across the car park. So it was just some, a, a feeling you get. Now they've gone inside. They've gone the men have gone into McDonald's to escape or get some lunch. PC Robinson is about to cut short the men's happy meal. Oh, what are you doing? Yeah. How about the other two that we're looking for that just come out of being killed? Uh, Why? What's up? You're missing your blue golf that's sat over there? Oh, yeah, blue golf. Is it not? Oh. Are you the other two that just been pointing out to us? And I'm sure the staff will be quite happy to identify you two. All right. What? They knew what they were doing. I think they were trying to really play the system with us a little bit and played in ignorance to what had gone on. So just sitting there at the moment, and you two are the two that have been identified. Oh. So you're probably likely to find that when we confirm things at the start, you'll be getting yourselves arrested. They were probably quite adept at trying to pull the wool over police officers' eyes um, and feigning a bit of innocence. Who's got any ID on them? What's your name? The men aren't local. They might not be yet. They've travelled 60 miles to grab a bargain in Hull today. So, if you're both from Brownsley, how did you get here? What brings you down to Hull? Come for the mission? No, you got down here. How did you get here then? Well, mate in car. Which car? Matt Golf. Hmm. So, where's your mate? I don't know, he ain't come out. He ain't come out of where? I took shot, I went to it shot. Their mate hasn't come out of B&Q because he's being held by security. I suggest if you want to commit crime, stick to South Yorkshire. Where have come to commit crime? Who is it that's in the shop? It's Will. He Will. It, we went in, we've been into Alfred. I rang him, I goes, where are they? I goes, I'm sat in car. He goes, oh, uh, there's been a problem. I said, what's the name? There's been a problem. Then he put phone down. I mean, I tried ringing him back again. And I couldn't right. get in, in touch with him. It's not your sort of typical taking something from a display, you know, trying to conceal it and walking out the store with it. Their plan meant removing an electric lawnmower valued at £60 from its box 
and replacing it with power tools worth nearly £500. But before the third member of the gang could pay for the £60 mower, store detectives who had seen the scam before stepped in and spoiled their plan. Right, you're in custody on suspicion of theft. I tell you that you do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioning something which later lying in court and anything you do say may be given in evidence. The third lad, from what I gather, um, I, I didn't see him. He was quite nervous in the store. And once he's been detained, he's basically spilled the beans about everything that's gone on and dropped his two mates right in it. Off Hessel Road, the van driver is also right in it. The hole he's been digging for himself. Have you ever been dealt with for any traffic offences before? Yeah. What? Speeding. Speeding. Right. How many points have you got for speeding? Seventy-three. I can't see the problem. If if, they've, if he's got a, light, a driving license number that's got points on it, yeah, we can give him more. We can give him more, can't we? Oh, jeez. Point where he's banned, can't we? Hmm. So the point where he's banned. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. A driver number. It's like a ghost license, if you like. It's complicated if you don't know the ins and outs, but it's effectively a driving licence that doesn't exist. It's purely for points. Instead of going to court, I'm going to give you three points now and a fine of £60 oh, for the offence that you've committed. Hey, you're all right. But just bear in mind, if you'd have been honest with me from the start, know, you'd have been on your way now. I can avoid the points, please. No. Just like... No, because the, the fine comes with the points, I'm afraid, and vice versa. Nowadays, we've, everything's linked to the police national computer, the insurance database, the driving licence database. It's all on there for us to find out. And find out they have. You've got six points for licence offences and insurance. Oh. So that's his driver number. But they've just turned the names around. Oh, his name was Quema Pasquala, spelled like that. 20 East Grove. But they're still not there yet. Uh, you won't have a licence to surrender, will you? Oh, come on. Please. Mm. It was challenging. At the main police station in Hull, the two shoplifters caught in McDonald's are being booked in. When we got them into the custody suite, they certainly weren't strangers to the environment. St Andrews came McDonald's. You can take everything you've got in your pockets out and stick it on the counter for me. The third man involved, brought in by PC Stevenson, was just earning a little extra cash on his day off. The car that he was using was his mum's car, which he had permission to drive and he had uh, relevant documentation for. He'd come from out of town with these two lads who had agreed to pay him a set sum of money in order to go down and uh, steal these items from B&Q on their behalf. He was actually quite a nice, polite young chap who would obviously got a bit taken in by a couple of alleged friends. He was told the plan of what was going to happen and uh, it worked to plan until guilt got the better of him and he gave himself up. Back by Hessel Road, there are still more questions than answers. Have you got an Italian licence? Yeah. Where is it? Is a uh, home. Been posted to Italy as well, my wife. Have you or haven't you got an Italian license at your home address? I don't think now I'll go with me. Is it at home? No. Right. With no verification the man even has a license in Italy, Townhill is going in for the kill. I can't prove it, can I? Okay, so we're seizing your van from you as well. Gave me no alternative really than to report him for uh, driving other than in accordance with his license, which is effectively no driving license, and um, seizing his van. Okay. I'll have, have to go rob from tomorrow. Well, there's nothing to be like that, is there? Uh, well, I have to be some hmm? like that. I have to have got family to feed in there. What I have to do? I have to go rob or I have to go kill a somebody in the morning. It's a bit over the top, isn't it? <laughs> you know, it's, it's not crime of the century he's committed. I'm working really for penalty in this country I'm working. I accept that, but is that, that, off, that's is completely negative. separate as to why I've stopped you. Whilst I, I can have a, a little bit of sympathy for his position, I've got no sympathy for the fact that he's in that position because that's of his own volition. Nobody asked him to do what he did. <laughs> Where 
this and lose the job. He chose to unload his van on the street. The entire contents of the van just started appearing. Well, I lost my job. That is my job. Because I'm no doll, no nothing. The government do not give me a penny. I have to work to keep yeah. my family going. I have to go spatch drugs, things in me I don't want to do. But there we go again. You have to to survive. These days, many shops are fitted with panic alarm buttons. When they're hit, the theory is the cops spring into action. Like this afternoon. Fresh from demonstrating their customer care at B&Q, PCs Weeks and Stevenson are responding to an alarm set off in Tesco's. It's been an update from the star that uh, there's been three males kicking off in the star. One of them's been detained. Quite often the alarms are false, but not this one today. As soon as we walked in there, it was like World War III had broken out. There was uh, there was bits of barrier keep strewn around. There was people, there was members of staff trying to keep other people out of the store. Calm down, fella. Let go of me now. Wait, calm down. Come in, I'll calm down. Let go of me then. Tell him to let go of me then. Just let go of it. Let go of me now, fella. The two lads on the floor didn't come in to do their shopping. They were looking for a fight. They'd been observed by a member of the public urinating up a doorway. Um, and the, the member of the public felt that that was inappropriate and made a passing comment to them of, well, do you think it's appropriate to be having a piddle up a doorway? You know, it's not really on, is it? And then he'd gone into Tesco's Express to do his shopping. Uh, the two lads have followed him in and have assaulted him in the aisles. Uh, you're not telling me, mate. You're the rest of the suspicion of assault on the murder. Damn it, mate. Shut the f*** up. Don't stand f*** on me, I'm not now. Damn you, now. No. So you must be Mr Smith, then. I am. I'm Mr Price. Get me off now. Calm down. The lads have been handcuffed, but they're still more than a hand or leg full. It was just a case of making best use of ourselves and the members of the public until other patrols arrived. Alex, let's slide sideways so you can talk to him. Like, calm him down. Calm him down for us. Calm down. When we arrived, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like it. There was a crowd gathering outside, big glass windows, and people can see right into the shop. And it was absolute chaos. You're gonna keep calm now. Yeah. Yeah? These two kids were brothers. And all these two brothers did was wind each other up. So if you're going to stay calm, to start with, I'm going to let Max sit up. Luckily, some gallant shoppers had waded in to restrain the brothers before there was a chance of anyone getting badly hurt. I did a search of him to make sure he had nothing else on him, and he disclosed that he had a, a knife blade in his back pocket. And I've actually found three-inch pen knife blade that's been snapped off with a bit of blue masking tape on it to act as a handle. You should have stabbed him. The potential of it was, was quite sinister, really. There's not many reasons people need to carry knife blades with them. She just stabbed him, man. Yeah, whatever. See? Yeah, whatever. Hey. Yeah. Go on. Go on, then. Just stay there and stay calm. Yeah, if it can go in yours. Keep yourself nice and calm. Keep it away from me, then. I'll yeah. Brotherly love. I thought you said he was your brother and you looked yeah. out for him. Well, calm down then. I swear. I'll kill you. When we walked out of Tesco's Express with this uh, this lad trussed up and taking him to the van, all I can see is the whole shop front of Tesco's Express full of Chinese students and 
local whole folk, all with their digital cameras and video phones, all filming everything that's going on. It's not the first time I've seen the antics of our shift on YouTube, and I can't imagine it'll be the last. Ah! 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 We are very much aware that violence, violent situations, weapons, etc., are on the increase. Taxi! Here you go, Father, you up the steps. Step, up the steps. Yeah. Don't mess about. Don't place in the buggers. Don't place in the buggers and you get. Ah! <laughs> Another one, Melvin. Another happy customer. Nobody wants to be confronted with violent situations. Nobody wants to have to deal with them. But it's the nature of the job. The two brothers have been taken to the police station downtown, where one of them has swapped raging on the floor of Tesco's with raging on the floor of his cell. Stop lying to me! Stephen. They lied to me! Stay calm. Stay calm, Stephen. Stay calm. They weren't so much speaking to us as snarling and grunting at us, and a lot of it wasn't coherent. You couldn't work out what they were saying. Um, but it was sort of almost back to caveman sort of mentality of wanting to fight with the world. What is your name? Turn your head to the other side for me, Steve. No. Yes, turn your head. No. Turn your head, yes, turn your head. Luckily, the cops have a procedure to get out of the cell alive. And with the assistance of um, a couple of the other um, officers that were present in the custody suite at the time, a cell exit routine was performed on him. The other brother is calm for now, except the cops have got his driving licence. Calm down, fella. <laughs> Matty, what did we say about being dumb? Ah! You were warned, weren't you, fella? He didn't like having his driving licence touched and went a bit ballistic, really, at that point, when we were trying to ascertain his full details and confirm them with his driving licence. And uh, so, because he had to be restrained, re-handcuffed, taken to his cell and placed properly in a cell for his own safety and for everybody else's. Keep your legs out and behave yourself. Cross your legs over for me. Oh. Do you want to do the search on for us? Give oh. him a full search. Oh. Bye. I won't do. I'm asking now. I mean, it's something you see as a police officer, but I wouldn't suggest it's a daily occurrence. We don't see that sort of behaviour every day. It's certainly not the most violent people I've dealt with but I think the potential for them to become quite violent and more nasty was, was certainly quite high. The judge, when they appeared in front of him in Crown Court, agreed. He ordered the brothers to be locked up for 10 and 12 months for a fray. The B&Q boys all pleaded guilty in court to attempted theft. The two caught in McDonald's were given 12-month community orders while the one who was earning a little extra on his day off was fined £150. And after questioning, the alleged armed robber given the shock treatment was eliminated from police inquiries. No one was ever prosecuted for the supermarket robbery. Sam's got something to be jealous of. A famous comedian with quite a reputation takes a shine to Juliet next on BBC One. It's Hotel Babylon.